So I'm going to use just simple numbers for my store. But obviously, normally you would use store variables for more complex calculations and numbers that you want to use later on in some of the questions that you're doing. So for now, let's just choose a couple. We're going to use a number, say two. And here's a store button. And let's store it as letter, in this case, A. So if we did, say, seven plus A, then you should obviously know what the answer would be. Really nice little feature. Let's choose another number. Uh, let's go negative three. And we'll store that as B. And then we can start using this algebraically to get some answers. So if we had a minus b, then again, you should know what the answer is. And yet, you're right, it's 5. There's also above the store called recall. And what that will allow you to do is rather than produce the letter, we'll actually recall the number that is stored as that variable. So we can see that by using recall, in the, say the calculation line we did above, we get the same sort of, um, we'll get the same answer, but uh, written differently on the calculator screen. And sometimes that may also be useful if you want to see the number rather than the variable itself. There's times where students say to me, well, how do you delete a variable? Well, really, you don't need to delete any variables. Um, you just leave them there. Um, if you look, if I have anything stored as E, no, I don't. It's zero. So that means there's nothing stored at the moment. Well, maybe zero is stored, but really there's nothing stored as E. But, and we can just keep wiping over the old one. So we had here what eight was stored as before. We could choose a different number, um, say this number here, and we'd store that as A, and that then will wipe over the top of the previous one. As you can see now, A is 0 0.23. But if you did, for some reason, want to delete any of your variables so that they are wiped clean, you can do that by going into memory and delete memory, which is number two. Go into all and then just scroll down and it will tell you what you've actually got in your memory. And there we can see that there's that A and that's his memory story it has. So that's not very much. Press delete. It's now gone. We quit that. And if we now go back into A, we can see it's now not got it stored as a memory. And probably the last thing, when you're doing graphing screens, so here I've just got two uh, graphs. Uh, and if we say looked where they intersected, which is something a part of another video, but let's just say we're going to look at this answer here. Notice these are also the variables for X and Y at this moment in time. So back in the calculator screen now, if we type in X, it will give us the number from that graphing screen. And if we type in Y, it'll give us the Y value. Now, don't forget that if we then did something else with that, it would wipe those numbers over. So you really want to sometimes store those numbers. So at that moment in time, you may say, well, you know what? I'm going to store that X value as a different variable. So that now it's kept as a different variable so that when I go back into, um, say, the graphing screen and I want to find a different value, let's just say, do a value at say uh, 0 0.3 and I get this answer. Notice that my X is now being replaced with a new one. My Y has been replaced by the new value. But this uh, 1.38 that I had from the graph earlier is a different variable because I've saved it something else and that's very useful. Hopefully you found that useful. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the videos.